Right, we've just met Tom. Um, I'll drop a little video about Tom. He's our plasterer. Um, well, when I say our plasterer, he does all our plastering for us and he's an absolutely brilliant guy. But you'll we'll, we'll get to meet him in a minute. Where are we going? <laughs> Right, this is Tommy Skims. Morning. All, he skims all our jobs. If you want to come in, John, we'll have a look at this. So he's put. Tom, Tom what's this stuff called? Scrim. I'm asking questions. Scrim tape stops joints cracking. Stops joints cracking. And what? Why are you PVA and edges at board? I seal edge at board so it doesn't pull up moisture out of plaster and set too quickly. Right, cool. Um, otherwise, it all cracks and goes really hard on angle bead. Right. How many bags of plaster will you use on this job? Uh, four, maybe five. Right. I think four. You think four? Intuition tells me four. <laughs> Experience. Experience. Um, yeah. And when, when are you expecting it to be finished? Tom, Tom always arrives first thing in the morning. Oh. Um, and we'll literally ring him up today and ask him to do a job and call come tomorrow, always. Four hours. Four hours? Yeah. So that's finished this yeah, time yeah. of year? Yeah, most. Yeah. It, summertime would be half hour quicker. If it's, really? Yeah, if it's well, warm. I thought it'd be a lot more than that. Go well, it's still got set up. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's setting up. It's plastering up take a little bit quicker. And you're going to do it in one coat, aren't you? The two. Put no, sorry, oh. what I mean is you're going to do the full oh, room do, in one Do room with one full go. Put a coat on, flatten it off, Yeah. mix up another coat. Right, and do you use them long... I use a speed skin, but right. you don't have to. Well, what we'll do, we'll, we'll, when, when Tom starts plastering, we'll jump in and have a look at his... Um, what are they called? Speed skin. They're like long floats, Yeah, yeah, they? it's like a long ruler. But we'll yeah, have a look at them as well. But you don't have to use them if you don't want them. We've got Tom here now, he's putting a bit of plaster on. What's happening here, Tom? What's your head? Made. <laughs> He's only been here 10 minutes. He's nearly done all the ceiling. In 10 minutes we going out. Another 10 minutes we going out. Right. That. right, Tom, what's that you're using there? It's my speed skipper flatten it all in. Is any good? Yeah, I, I only flatten that now, to be fair. I only flat lines in with it, but I'll finish it with my trowel as normal. What do you do? Get it smooth with that, and then that, the I last... Just get, I just flatten big lines out, really. And then use your normal I'll leave, trowel. It, I'll leave it 10 minutes or so, and I'll get my trowel out, normal Marshall town trowel, and finish it off properly. Good. Right. right, Tom's kindly letting me have a go of his, what's it called? Speed skin. Speed skin. So I'm going to have a go at it. If I mess it up, please don't laugh. Yeah. So just like that, Tom. Just up, gentle, no pressure. Can't oh. go wrong. Uh, not too bad. Can't go right, there you go, thank you. And the Tom obviously does it a lot quicker than me all the way up, but I was absolutely nervous. <laughs> Right, I'm off for breakfast. Cheers, Tom. I'm a little bit slow this morning, so we've lots of time for questions, I think. So what we're going to do, I'm just going off to get some steel wide armoured. And I am... Does she want to cross the road? Go on, then. Um, I'm going to... And Jen's going to fire a lot of questions at me because we're absolutely way behind now with questions. So fire away, Jen. Right, so... Oh, before we do as well, I have quite a few messages now on the burner phone. Um, if you're watching this, um, I did actually say you won't get a reply, just send the WhatsApp message. I know some have sent text messages as well, so we're going to include them as well, because some people haven't got WhatsApp. Um, but you need to send the six-digit number as well. Um, you won't get a reply, but all the messages are there, I can assure you. I think there's over 200 on WhatsApp and maybe, did I say 20 odd on Messenger? I think so. So the odds of winning it are still good. Okay, Jen, fire away. Right, so the first one, Anthony Deans, with your bill packs, is there an option to add internal storage rooms? Um, so it does say that if you, want, if you want to add out else, that's up to you, but I mean, an internal storage room is like, it's pretty easy to work out. Obviously, you're going to need a door, um, you're going to need an internal wall and some OSB. Um, it's quite easy to work that out, though. Like, you want a top plate, bottom plate, and then you want enough timbers to go every 400 to create your wall, a row of noggins. Um, if it's a three meter build, you'll want a 3.6 top plate, 3.6 bottom plate, and then you'll want 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 30. You'll want eight, you want nine lengths of CLS at 2.4, at eight for your uprights and one for your noggins. Right, okay. So, Thomas Norton, we were supposed to answer his question last week. Um, what van do you recommend, closed or drop side? Uh, closed. Um, don't do what we do sometimes and go pick some materials up. Get everything you possibly can delivered. It takes quite a bit of organisation and money up front, but if you can get everything delivered, um, it's a lot better than nipping. It's, it's not cost effective to be going out and picking it up in a drop side van. 
Uh, but I'd, I'd definitely get a, a van like this, a box van, so you can keep all your stuff hidden from thieving crackheads. <laughs> so this um, this question, I think we asked it the other day, um, but it's just, I think he's reworded it because we might not have answered it in the right way. So, Cobra Steve, can you continue a patio by laying the slabs onto or instead of wooden floor? Yeah, I, I did see this pop up, but I'm still not quite sure what you mean. So... You could have you you could have the internal of the room um, as the same floor as outside, but you want some separation between inside and outside. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, I've never seen it done. It, it would be nice to transition it through, but you know you, you definitely need some kind of Protection to stop in that. Place. Yeah, to stop that water coming in. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Adrian has a shed that needs to be replaced. It has an insulated concrete pad. How would he finish the floor? Uh, if it's just a shed, I wouldn't be worried about it if it's just got a concrete pad on it. Uh, but if you want to use it more than a shed, then if it's insulated and you've got a DPC on it, then literally, you know, you can lay out you want on it. And, and you can put, I'd, I'd maybe, maybe go for that LVT, luxury vinyl tile. Um, it's waterproof, uh, really easy to fit, and there's good... Um, it lasts long. Can't think of the right word. It lasts long. It's, there's good wear on it. Right, so... Ooh. Martin Stone, would you consider putting a link to the tools that we use? Um, yeah, somebody told me this before, and all this is you need to become affiliate on uh, on um, Amazon, Amazon, so that people will go out. He uses a Makita DTD DTD one seven one, and there's the link, and then I'd actually gain a bit of kickback from it. But it also takes a long time. I mean, last night, I, so I mean. Right, last night what happened, so I finished work, um, the van wouldn't start, uh, I'll tell you what happens, right, let's let's talk about what happened yesterday, right, a guy around the corner from us had his door prized open and tools nicked out of his car, so we always take our tools in on the job, but I don't want no damage to the van, so we left the doors open on the vans and for some reason the battery on my van died, so we tried to bump start it off, Q John's video of us bump starting it down the road. Um, and then some guy jogging past says, well, I hope that one's going to be on YouTube as well. So there you go, guy jogging past, it is on YouTube. Um, so the van broke down, um, got that started, went home, dropped Jen off, went home, got my car, because I didn't want to risk going to where I was going. Then drove an hour and 15 minutes, I think it was, to get to look at this job near Scarborough. Um, if you're watching this, I, I'm, I'd love to get this job. I, I hope we do. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic one, fantastic location. Then drove home again, so I've got like nearly a three hour round trip there um, with site visit. Got home, started editing, and it was nearly 10 o'clock before I had finished. Um, what was the question? <laughs> would, would you consider putting a link to yeah, tools? Yes, so it was nearly 10 o'clock when I finished, so putting a link to tools and stuff, it's, it just takes more and more time, doesn't it? But I, 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 maybe if I just copy and pasted it and just add it all in the file and then just copy and paste it on, on the end of everything, but that, that in itself, the, the amount of tools we use would take time, but um, I, I don't know. I, I suppose it's something to think about in the future, isn't it? Right, OK. Sorry, so... that was really long-winded for an answer. <laughs> Adrian Bailey, doing a 5.3 5 5 5 by 4.2, how many bill packs will he need to buy from you? Um, only one, 5.3 by 4.2. So I would go for a... a 5.3... I don't think I've got a six before. I've got a seven before. You could go for a seven before and reduce it. Um, basically, if, if you go if you go for the seven before, then you, you read the bill pack and you'll see what timbers are for what, and then you could like work it out and cut back on what you need on there. But you don't need to buy one. Right, Daniel Moran. What company do we source the rubber roof, edging strips, and corner trims from, and two-part gutter trim? We use Northern Building Plastics. They've got a few branches around the country, but I know they deliver most places, apart from some far-out places in Scotland. But they will deliver more or less anywhere the next day as well. Um, they they do everything that we use: uh, full replacement boards, uh, two-part gutter trims, P trims, rubber roof in three different sizes. Everything they do a lot. So Emma Hutchinson, quickly, wants a plug and play jacuzzi. What size armor cable should she use? 10, 16 or 26? Without knowing the spec of the jacuzzi, but if it's a plug and play one, if it's one of them, uh, let's say one of them inflatable ones. Lazy then, spa thing. Yeah, lazy spa, then I think you might be 16. 
um, but anything bigger than that, I think you'd be going up. It all depends. I can't, I can't, I couldn't comment without the spec on the thing, and I'd have to put it to an electrician anyway. But, but you, um, I know some of them come with a plug that you just plug straight in, but it's not suitable. Can you remember what um, cable we used for that windy job? Say a jacuzzi, didn't they? It was, it was um, twenty. Was it twenty? Is it 24 or something? It, it, it oh, was 20 something sure. anyway, because it was a big one, wasn't it? Yep, yeah, right, OK then. So we've just arrived at the um, place we get our Go, go on, fire from. away, because I'm, wait, I'm waiting for a parking space to appear. Right. Nyqua 66, did you win diesel roulette? Yes, yes, I've never lost diesel roulette <laughs> yet in this van. I lost it one time years ago in an Astra van, um, <laughs> but I've only ever lost it once. <laughs> Joe Blem, no build packs for 8x8, he wants to build one. An 8x8? Yeah. That's insanely massive and it's planning permission and building control and they'd want all kinds of crazy specs. My, my build packs are generally designed for um, permitted development so that you can just go for it. Um, that's, it's massive, that's huge. But if you, do you do like a 4 before one? Uh, no, I don't think there's a four be faster because once once you go over a certain size, then you start to need to put steel in, in roofs yeah. and stuff, and it's yeah. more complex and more, um, more, more. It's it's a bit more complex to just put in like a pack. Yeah. Right. Okay. RC SK nail nails for the nail gun. Are they the same for Pazload and Milwaukee? Yes. Yeah. I know there's a slight little. little different angle variation on some of them but all the nails we use are universal where they'll go in the Paz Lord or the Milwaukee um, the, the the second fix I, I don't know if you're on about I think you might be on about first fix by the term nails but the second fix we use 18 gauge and um, we will explain that when we do the cedar cladding as well why we use 18 is it, it is 18 isn't it yeah 18 gauge yeah <laughs> Oh, so Cobra Steve said what he meant was if he was to continue the patio theme up and into the room, would the tiles rot the wooden base as it's the garden room and it can't breathe like bare wood can? So basically he's saying would he just be able to put the patio onto the wooden base that we use? Um, yes, you could. Um, so if you... <sighs> Yeah, you could, but you're going to have to think about what kind of adhesive you're going to use because you're going to need a flexible adhesive as well. Um, and I'd, I'd think you're not going to put like Indian sandstone or something like that down on it, although it would take the weight. I just don't think it'd be right. Maybe you're thinking porcelain or something like that, but you're going to have to think about your adhesive because you're going to get movement as well. Right, OK. Go on, so you can ask another one if you want. I'm, I'm ooh, still waiting for this guy to pull out. Time, hold on. Okay, Kevin Fish, my house foundations are piled because of local ground conditions. Does your system work on this kind of ground? We've never had, um, we've never come across one that hasn't worked as of yet. Um, you bear bearing in mind, right, that these buildings are only like four, five ton maximum, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you, when you think about a house, it's a hell of a lot more. One pack of bricks is probably seven, eight hundred kilos, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, so don't actually need the foundations that you would for a house extension if that makes sense one more db96 bought a bill pack five by three excellent value for 96 pounds thank you makes sourcing material so much easier and easy in ireland it's cladding two sides in metal cladding can he fix the metal to the timber slate buttons rather than buying resilient bars and what gap to leave at the top to be able to run the soffit in so you can you can you can fix it with timber battens because um right we're gonna fit the metal today um oh oh now we put 10 mil yeah and some other stuff okay, yeah maybe it's better back on the other side because the cable is there right in in the next to the white one okay <laughs> all that all, all that and then found it wrong place. Right, sorry, repeat the question. Oh, right, so we're going to do the metal today. Um, we're going to do the metal today. Jen and John went to look at the metal being processed yesterday, so we're going to drop a video in with that as well. You can use it on the slate buttons, uh, which is what we used to do, and um, Jen will explain about the screws. We used to use, like, a tech screw um, designed to go through the metal and then into the wood, and then with um, a colour-coded cap on top. So you can do that. The only the only reason why we use a resilient bar is because we we, we like to rivet it now because it's a little bit of a neater job. Right. Okay. So let's crack on with this. Then we'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay we're in Smans. This is where we get our electrics from. If you want to just span over here and just see, it's right there in black and brown. 
<laughs> Black and brown. <laughs> Tony Montana. You wanna say hello? Hello. <laughs> Right, so just to elaborate, um, DB96, he um, asked what's the gap to leave at the top to be able to run the soffit in. Right, so what we did, we set up a little jig because we fell foul of it before the soffit being 10 mil, we left a 10 mil gap. But of course the roof is on a pitch, even though it's very slight, it created, the gap was a lot small, smaller. So I think we leave now a 15 mil gap, don't we? Possibly 18. Yeah, so. um, but even if you leave an 18 mil gap, then... It, it, as long as it's uniform, it, it looks fine and, and it gives you airflow as well, so that's that's a good thing. But do leave a gap, but more than the soffit, because you'll fall foul of the fact that the roof is pitched. Do you want to just say as well, because if we've already got the walls up, then we put it tight to the soffit, don't we? Yeah, sure, yeah. If, we, if the walls are already up like they are on this occasion, we'll, we'll push it tight up to the soffit. Um, but, you know, if there's a little gap here or there, you, you, you can't actually notice it, it's absolutely fine. Right, Pete James, can he pre-order the steel for his bifold if he knows the bifold size? Yeah, sure, so you want a minimum of 300 bearing on both sides, so if your doors are 4 metres, you want 4,600, if your doors are 3.6, you want 3, 3, 4, 4, 2. Right. Three, three, 300 mil bearing minimum on each side. Pete James, has, <laughs> Pete James has said minimum width from the main wall, wall to bifolds, 400 millimetre gap plus wood required, will that be okay? He doesn't want the bifolds in the centre. Minimum width? Yeah, from the main wall to the bifolds. It's not about the cheeks, in it? Yeah, oh, the cheeks, yeah, the, the cheeks we've got, so this one we've, we've got, we've got, I know you mentioned it yesterday, one was 400, yeah. wasn't it, and then one was about 330 because of the difference in cladding on each side. Mm -hmm. um, but you want, like I say, you want, I mean, the, the smallest we've had is a 200 mil cheek on each side. I won't go any smaller than that, because you've got a lot of weight on that steel, because the roof's pushing down as well. So Dan Wareham says, does the steel have to be directly over the top of the door placement? No, 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 no. Um, I mean, in fact, it would be better if, if the timber was above the door, but you, you need the steel above the door to keep the weight from bearing down on the doors, uh, but it doesn't have to be directly above, just somewhere in close relation to the top of the door, I guess. Right, so Will Ellis, <clears throat> excuse me. Willie, I don't know. <laughs> we put some sort of sheeting up before, your plast before we do plasterboarding. Can you give a bit of insight as to why, and would you be able to replace this step with moisture-resistant plasterboard? Yes, um, so, so we addressed this yesterday. Um, right, so we always put it up, right? The vapour barrier, the whole issue about the vapour barrier is you put it up, but you're going to put holes in it, so are you actually you know, doing anything? The report came back and it said it was pretty redundant, apart from making it a bit, helping with air tightness. Um, we did discuss it yesterday, and yes, you could use foil-backed boards um, because obviously that, that is a vapour barrier in itself. But the foil-backed boards, I'm not sure of the expense of them. They're probably quite a bit more expensive than a regular board. And the polythene, I know it's a pain to put up, but if you've got a stapler, I think it was £40 now a roll. A roll will do a room. Yeah, you can use the foil-backed boards. Sorry. Right, Niall Moran. We've small... <laughs> no. Niall no. Moran. Niall Moran. Now, I know of somebody called Niall Moran in Leeds. I don't know if that is you. Um, some relation to Chris Kilroy. I don't know if it is you, but if it is, say hi. All right, hi. Na oh, you mean him say hi. <laughs> yeah, not you. <laughs> with smaller bifolds on this build, do you still need the steel, or could you get away with the timber? Um, you could get... Right, so the 2.6, I mean, they're only 400 small than the 3 metre set. Um, on the elevation we're on, because we're on the side elevation, the weight of the roof isn't bearing down on that. You could have got away with the double timber, although um, I still would have always put steel in. The steel, I think the steel was, give or take, £150. So it's a bit of a, I know it's a more expense and it's heavy and, you know, you've got a fix to it and stuff like that. But it, it, it is reassuringly strong. Right. But you can double timber and bolt together or flitch bit. Right, OK. Sorry. Auto vag auto. <laughs> Sorry. Untreated metal will r rust quick. Right. Untreated metal. Right. I've 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 been in sort of construction for some time now. Um, 
I'm, I'm drawing on with these, right? I've been in construction for some time, right? I've stripped out houses that are 150, 200 plus years old with stealing. Um, yes, there is rust formed, but no, it has not affected the steel. Um, if you leave, I mean, if, if you Google rust, rust rates, yeah, rust rates, I will be dead and buried and born before that steel rusts, and so will you and anybody that's watching this in the next 50 years. Google rust rates, the ships under the sea in salt water that are still there, that have been there. I mean, when, when Titanic sank, mm -hmm. do you know, it's still there, isn't it? And yep. it's in salt water. Um, it's not going to rust in our lifetime or your lifetime or anybody's. If you want, if you want, get them galvanised, paint it, whatever you want to do, yeah. Right, Francis MC Manara. And I, sorry, and I'm not being smart about that. It just, loads of people say this, right? It does rust. Yeah, of course it rusts, right? But it won't rust in our lifetime or your children's lifetime. Yeah. Francis MC Namara, Fever Edge. Yeah, that's McNamara. Mac, McNamara. Ah, right. Okay. Is it M, M small C? Uh, it doesn't say, it just MC. Is he a DJ? I don't know. You were a DJ at one time, wasn't you? Don't go there. Remember when you were a DJ? What don't. was your DJ then? I'm not saying. Come on. No, right, no. go then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Feverage, shiplap, barrel board for cladding. <clears throat> Which would you recommend? And would warm vertical batten be enough for when cladding horizontal? Right, feather edge. Um... F right, we always used to put Feather Edge on the back um, and it, it's really good. It's good on the back, you can treat it, it's, it lasts, but it's not overly attractive on the front or the sides visible. Um, but, saying that, I would always double batten as well. Double batten allows more airflow and we will discuss double battening when we fit the cedar. We might even discuss double battening today, but double batten if you can get away with it. Right, okay, so I won't ask any more because we've just... No, go on, one more, one more, one more. I've got a pack up. Okay, all right, all done then. <clears throat> why don't you guys, oh, diced, why don't you guys use a recip saw to cut the rods with a decent metal blade? Um, because we've got a bandsaw, um, and I've just got round to getting some new blades for it. We did talk about this a few times, um, me and John, we were going to get some blades and stuff like that, but then I got the bandsaw and the bandsaw's ace, um, so we stick with the bandsaw. We, but, I mean, I, I do actually prefer using a hinge grinder as well. Oh, David, any advice on buying a nail gun off marketplace, what to look out for and what to avoid? Thanks for this series of videos, and I would recommend the build pack to anyone thinking of building a garden room. Right. It's very detailed. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get... I'm going to go get this gutter in for this job, yeah? Um, but then we'll talk about this on the way to where we're going. So stay tuned. We'll talk about nail guns and we'll talk about build packs. But thanks for that, Any advice on buying a nail gun off the marketplace? What right. to look out for and what to avoid? OK, so if you're going to buy a nail gun... Um, right, so a new, a new pass load, right? A new pass load IM350 IM Plus is going to cost you about £520, yeah? Right, if you use it... And then you can sell it, but you'll probably sell it for about 350 because you'll build one job out of it, right? So if that's not an option for you, then if you're going to buy a second-hand nail gun off Marketplace, I would go for Pazload IM350 Plus rather than the new one because the nails are twice the price and the gas is really expensive. Right, if you're going to buy a 350 Plus, make sure when you go around, you have a piece of wood with you. <laughs> um, and, and get... and. If you, when you message him, tell him you want to see it working, yeah, you want to see it fire 10, 20 shots, one after the other, because pass loads can be quite intermittent when they're working. Um, you might get three or four shots and then it just won't fire anymore. So you want to see it fire 10, 20 shots, one after the other, boom, 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 straight into the wood, right? But they're also very easy to service as well. So you'll get, I think you get a pass load iron 350 plus on Marketplace for about 220 for a decent one, yeah? Build uh, and when you build your garden room, you'll resell it for a very similar price. Or if that's a bit much and you want to buy brand new, then you can get um, an air compressor set up. We talked about this the other day. It's Silverline, right? I know they sell some really crap tools, but the Silverline nail guns are spot on and they won't let you down with an air compressor. Um, I don't know about buying a Milwaukee off marketplace because they still would fetch a lot of money and I'd be just a bit dubious because they're not you can't service them like um you can a pass load. Right. Okay. Okay. And thanks for the build pack as well. Um the heads up on the build pack. Build packs, you get everything you need and there's no nobody slags them down, so it's worth 96 quid. 
Right, Rob Stubbs. Can I ask when fixing the walls to the floor? I notice you screw down through the floor randomly. Isn't there a risk if you fix more towards the inside of the room than the outside? You may miss the floor joist and only get a fixing through the flooring. Uh, so what we do, so when we put a wall up, right, we'll put we'll put a screw, first of all, we'll put a screw at each end. A screw at each end normally secures even a six, seven metre wall from falling over, um, unless it's really windy. And then what we'll do then, we'll go along, we'll put one screw in each bay just to pull it down, to compress it down to the floor, and then we follow through and nail it behind. And that'll go into the 4 be free anyway, won't it? Yeah, yeah. From, we, from where it's positioned, the wall on the floor, it is directly above the 4 be free or more or less um, but then you know we screw it down to pull it down then we nail it as well because the screws are not sufficient on their own lee campbell any tips for an odd shaped garden room such as a kite and how much use would a build pack be for a room this year two sides at approximately five meters and the short sides are approximately 2.5 Right, and you're a kite shape, yeah. Right, so you could still get a build pack uh, for the equivalent rectangle size, yeah? And and you would literally just alter it. It, it would just think about, think about a rhombus, so you've got a rectangle and you're squeezing it on its side and making a kite shape. So I'd still go for the build pack for the similar size. Um, and what I would do though, I would go down the line of furrings. We built a triangle shaped garden room just before Christmas 2022 depending on when you're watching this. If you find that, you'll see I explained, I do a little setup of furring, um, a little setup of when you put your roof timbers on a triangle and why you need to use furrings. Uh, but I definitely go down the furrings route and buy the build pack the same size as the equivalent rectangle. Right, Darren Irving, do you ever, or could you PU glue all the walls as he lives in a high area with considerable wind and it will aid movement and crack creaking? Um. No, if, if honestly, mate, if, if you if you build it and put in the fixings, we put in the fixings and build to our standard, and it ain't gonna creak. Trust me, it'll be absolutely solid. Right. Okay. Hold on. Hoog eleven. Have you tried Dewalt Forstner type bit seventy five mil instead of chainsaw for recessing top bolt on floor frame? A Dewalt Forstner bit. Yes. Is that what it says? Yes. Right. So I've, I, I, I'm, I'm. I, I don't want to come across as being a smart ass or anything like that, right? Because I'm certainly not, right? I take everything on board, right? But it's just, a, a, I know it would be neater, yeah? But it would be another drill bit, right? That I would have to continually replace because it wouldn't last long. Yeah, it would be neater, but being neater serves no purpose whatsoever. And we have the chainsaw out for cutting the ends of the 4 free. So, although, yeah, it, it might look rough, right but it's there's nothing wrong with it using the chainsaw to notch them out like that yeah it would be neater but being neater serves no purpose at all and like i said it'd be just another bit that i'd have to continually keep buying I hope, I hope that explains it <clears throat> without yeah. being the smart ass do you know what i mean but, yeah sorry Sorry. Tony Rhodes, do you ever use a flitch beam above a bifold opening? We have done previously. Uh, it's been asked quite a few times. We have done previously, but we opt for the steel now. But flitch beam, as I said before, absolutely fine above a door, yeah? Um, but if you've got a top-hung bifold door, then you have to watch out for any um, movement pulling on that head because the flitch beam, he's just gone over a curb. Look, he's le learner wagon. He's just gone over a curb. Unbelievable. <laughs> um... So, so when it pulls out, um, you can, you can, a flitch beam is strong that way, but put it that way, it'll, it'll, it'll pull on belly, yeah? yeah. Right, so this is um, <clears throat> another one about the nail guns. Dancing Mango would. <laughs> I, lo I love people's YouTube. Dancing Mango. Yeah. Love it. If you was just putting up one garden room, would you eBay or hire a nail gun? And would it be a framing or finishing? Right. Or would so you stick to an hammer? Okay, so what I would do, I wouldn't hire one unless you knew you were going to get it built pretty sharpish because the hire of a nail gun is going to outweigh... Um, it, basically, what I'm trying to say is you, you, could, you could buy one off Marketplace if you're going to hire it over three or four weeks, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because I don't know how long it's going to take you to build it. If you're going to build it, if you're having two weeks off work, then hire one. Yeah. You get a brand new one if it's faulty, you know, if it stops working, we'll send you out another one. Brilliant. Um, I so that that was it. Um, so I'll, tell me the question one more time. Um, going or, you, or use a hammer. Or a hammer. Yeah. You could, no. Tell me the full question. Because there's oh, another right. part we're going to address then. All oh, right. Hold on then. Hold on. Oh, I don't know if 
that's fine. Oh, if you was just putting up one garden room, would you eBay it or hire a nail gun? It, would it be framing or finishing? Ah, right, framing or finishing. Right, so there's two types of nail guns, yeah? There's a first fix and a second fix. Basically, first fix is for uh, framing and sheeting and stuff like that. A first fix nail gun will fire between a 50, or oh, maybe a 45 mil nail up to a 90 mil nail. So that's a first fix. That, and then you've got your finishing gun, which you say are oh, second fix. Second fix is skirting boards, architraves, clad and stuff like that. Now that will fire a brad, um, and I think you can get them from 20 mil up to 50 mil, little thin nails. So it's two different types of guns, um, but you would need two different types. Um, um, if, if you're gonna buy any gun, get the first fix gun, yeah? And do all your framing with that, and then you can tap in your little pins and stuff with, with a hammer and nails. Dancing Mango again, do you still cut the shoes yourself or can you buy from BAPS? Maybe this is answered in the bill packs. Um, so, so BAPS, we, we used to cut them, we used to buy a channel and we and we'd drill all the holes and then cut them. Um, and then BAPS says, look, why don't we try and get them sourced for you? And they did get them sourced and they're a relatively good price. Um, but lots of people use washers rather than shoes, so that's what, a choice. Uh, I've seen a question, I haven't wrote it down, but I can remember him saying, what are they actually called? Because he can't find them when he's tried getting in touch with BAPS. Right, if, if you're in BAPS in Leeds, let me just get the number out for you now. If you're in BAPS in Leeds, right, and ask the speaker, well, anybody there, really, um, and just say... Because I call them shoes. Um, I call them shoes, and they never have a problem. So the number is there, look, look. Order one free. 2439600. Ring Baps in Leeds and just say I'm I'm after buying the shoes for the for the rod system that Oak would use and, and they'll know. Um but I, I know the rest of the country they're not on the website though. Um so but they are called shoes. Saddles, they might call them saddles as well. Are they not some sort of C channel or something? No, 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 no. Um but if you ring Leeds, if you ring Baps in Leeds, sorry, I have no problem. Right, okay. Do you want to ask? Shall I ask one more? Yeah, ask a couple more. We'll wait for John. We're just going to the cafe, um, so we might do a little video on there as well. Brian Smith, what make are the work trousers? Right, so these are mascot advance. Um, I used to wear sneakers all the time. Uh, sneakers became massively expensive these are expensive but massively expensive but then kept ripping on the crotch and stuff like that and i've got a plumber friend called paul daly and he went down the same road as well and he says the quality's just gone downhill on snickers um and then we got on these mascot advanced the stretchy um they're, they're brilliant absolutely brilliant trousers i'll never ever buy a different pair of trousers i certainly couldn't imagine holster pockets um the only downside is if you're a female they don't do holster pockets on women's trousers which is ridiculous but they are yes, mascot advance and they are about 130 pounds are they something like that we're, yeah. we're about they're about 130 pounds from arco um but yeah, yeah you might think it's a lot of money but if you i'm literally i'm in these eight nine hours every day so mm. it is worth it in the long run and i don't know what i'm wearing but i've got a pair of liam's trousers action on, so action pants action uh, pants. they were described as action pants on facebook when i bought them now these action pants did actually rip on me yesterday on revealed, the crotch revealed the fagine <laughs> the growler <laughs> um right one more question rob stubbs <laughs> If you put a quote in for a garden, this is a really good question. If you put a quote in for a garden room and don't build it till a year later, who will have to pay for the increase in materials or is that price guaranteed in original quote? Um, so I can't guarantee a price because prices have escalated massively, massively. It's, it's insane, it's ridiculous, yeah? They've gone up massively, but... Um, Siobhan who does our admin, I said to Siobhan, look, I said, if it, if it start increasing anymore, we're going to have to write to people that we've already given them a quote and said, look, we can't honour that quote. But we did honour every single quote that we, we did, even though um didn't make much money at all. Um, but prices have gone up. So I think if you're going to if you're going to quote for somebody, then it might be worthwhile saying, you know, this price is valid for X amount of months because prices are just exponentially increasing continually. Oh, that's lovely. Nyqua 66 how many hand saws do we go through and can we get a hug hoodie to promote you? <laughs> hoodie? A hoodie? A hoodie? He wants a hoodie to promote us. Oh right. Um so hand, hand saws, what what I'd what I used to do, I'd get I'd get uh, when the old man build pack, um I'd I'd get free pack free hand saws, a pack of free hand saws. Um but then found out we very rarely use hand saws and then I'm buying brand new hand saws to cut insulation and plaster with, which makes no sense. Um but we, we we would get away with one hand saw per job, wouldn't we? 
everything's tooled now in it everything's battery operated um, yeah. but one, one hand saw would more than suffice in fact we probably do a job without a hand saw yeah can we yeah yeah um right inkland would it be a good idea to use a square plate washer to lock against the to lock against the concrete on the rod you resined in. You can't be sure how much concrete is left under the rod once you've drilled the pad, so the washer would ensure the rod couldn't push down over the years. Uh, yeah, you could do, you could do, but um, we did one before and, and we did drop a washer on and then wind a nut down um, on that, but the one we've just done, it's literally the middle of the room, so you, it's only to take the bounce out of the floor, so it's never ever going to push through anyway. And not on just that, that the nuts are bigger than the hole that we actually yeah, the, drilled, so. yeah, the nut on the rod is actually bigger than the hole, so the hole, the rod is 24mm, the hole, we ended up drilling a 30mm hole in the end, didn't we? Yeah. But the nut is bigger and the, the nut won't go through the concrete. Um, so that's that. Right, okay. Um, Thomas McNamara. So I'm just going to call him what I've been calling him all the time. Thomas MC Namara. McNamara. Yes. McNamara. McNamara. Wants to use my garden room as a gym with heavy weights alone, equipment in over 400 kil kilograms of iron weights. Hold on. Before any... Oh, right, so he's saying before any equipment's in there, he's got heavy weights that weigh 400 kilograms alone. Would you recommend the rod system for a gym with heavy weights and equipment or up for a reinforced pad? Um, oh, absolutely. You think about these old school gyms um, before, the, before the advent of... Um, what's the gyms called? Pro, what's, what's the gyms called? When, when did I used to go? What, when I used to do before? He's lying. He's never been to gym. I have been to gym. <laughs> uh, exercise for less. Exercise for less and all them gyms. Yeah, they're, they're in warehouses now. But think about the old school gyms in mills and in old buildings, yeah? So you've literally just got, you know, normal floors, you know, different tim timber floors on timber joists, and, you know, you're throwing weights around in there, absolutely no problem. Um, what I won't, might consider would be make sure you definitely use 20 mil, uh, 22 mil flooring rather than 18 mil though, but I would have no issue with that at all. John's here now, so we're gonna grab a bit of breakfast. Um, gonna try not to bore you with just a massive section of questions as well. Right, okay, thank you. Yeah, we're going to pull the cable now. It's a bit of a balls, is this run? Um, it's quite difficult. It's got block paved drive here. Um, we're going to explain what we're going to do with it. Um, just briefly, his internet comes in the middle of the two detached houses, so we've got to get a cable around there as well. Um, we're running a 10 mil steel wide armored free car. We've put the Cat 6, which John will tell you about in a minute, in some Copex, which basically is a 20 mil trunking, and we've taped it alongside that. Um, we'll explain why I've taped it alongside that because some places it's just going to be laid on top of the ground because th there is there is no possible way for us to get it buried. Now, steel wide armoured, in the regs, there is no depth. It's just, um, what's what's it, adequate precaution or something, isn't it? Yeah. No, I remember Adam failed it on his test one time. Um, but that's what we're going to do. John's going to explain why we run it alongside it and why there is no interference as well, but I'll put you over to John and talk about his Cat6, his connectors, and what he's just done to um, make sure this cable's good before we got the effort of pulling it. Well, we'll talk about this first. So, on this side, I've put this connector on. It is going to be getting chopped off, but because the run is so long, we've decided, me and Liam, that it's worth wasting two of these connectors. I've put one on the other side, one on this side, and I've put my testers on it just to make sure that we've got continuity on all the eight cables and we have. So as long as anybody doesn't chop through it now, we know that this cable's perfect. So talking about this cable, if you come over here, you'll see this is a Cat6 exterior grade cable. Um, we've got this plastic tube through here, which I'm sure is for structural strength of the cable when you're bending it so that you can't snap the cars. I think that's what it's for anyway. Um, and that's about it, really. Uh, we're talking about the run going up today. No, so what, what we're going to do, we'll talk about the run when we do the run, but we might not actually be doing the run today. What we're going to do, because we want to get the metal cladding on, we're going to thread it where it wants to go because he's got a flower bed and stuff. And we'll go have a look anyway. I'll show you where it's going to go then. Come on, David. Right, so somehow we've got to get the, the power source, the steel wide armoured, in behind where that grey box is because that's where his consumer unit is. I, haven't, I don't want to be lifting this block pavement, so I think what we're going to do is clip it direct or straight to the wall. I think we're going to go along that seam there, and I think what we're going to do is punch a brick out behind that gas pipe so we can get behind it and then mortar it in tidy. Because um, obviously we can't go over the front of it because it'll look a dog. Not sure what we're going to do on that corner yet, that's also an issue as well. And then we're going to drop down into the gravel, without showing the customer's house too much, we're going to drop down into the gravel bed. We're going to go along here. 
So we're going to chuck it behind this porcelain um, curb there because we don't want to be listening to porcelain tiles. And then we've got to thread it up through them bushes all the way up there, um, which it will get dug at some point. But the likes are behind there. We won't be digging it, we'll be just laying it on top of the soil, but it's visible, it's still wide armoured, so we're happy enough with that. Um, there's a bit of a problem on this one, there's loads of bushes and stuff we've got to consider to get behind as well. Um, but that's going to be the run, um, and we're probably going to dig that later because we want to get steel armoured on and talk to you about cladding. We're going to talk about cladding um, and battening and stuff like that. John and Brandon are currently fitting the metal on the side, but a lot of people want to know how we actually get the angle. Um, normally the angle would have been on that end, but that's a square wall, so this building, I'm going to exaggerate it like that, goes like that, yeah, so you're looking now to cut that angle there. So what we've done, we've determined the, where we want the sheet to finish at the bottom, and we've measured it at the top there, right? So what we do then is measure the width of the sheet. Now, a sheet finishes exactly, was it 1195? No, 1094. 1094, exactly. Yeah, so what we've done, we've measured from that point there, across there and that is a thousand and ninety four and what we've done we've leveled the line like that it doesn't matter where you put the line you just level the line and when you measure from there and there that point and that point that will give you your drop in your roof so for instance um, let's see how close these slate buttons are right let, let's let the practically bang on them slate buttons yeah right so if i was to start there and then measure jim will you hold that dead on there for me please 1,094, you said, uh, yeah. 1,094. So let's say that that's a like, that's 100% bang on. So what I'd do, I'd measure up there now, and I've got 747, and then I'd measure there, and I've got 733. So 747, do, do the maths, Jen. 747, did I say 743? 733. Seven. Seven what, David? Three, three. Yeah, it's 733. Don't know what that 40. is. Right, so I've got a 14, 14 millimetre difference between there and there. So what we would do, we start at one end and we measure up from the bottom of the sheet and then at that side of the sheet we'll measure up and we'll have 14 mil difference and then we'll strike a line from there to there we'll show you that happening and then we'll cut that off and then we've then created the pitch on the roof so it doesn't matter where you put that plumb line uh, level line rather it doesn't matter you know it's just a datum line but what you need to do that point is critical the width of the sheet whatever sheets you're using so when you measure up from there and there that's the difference. So the deduction of 14 mil is the drop between there to there in that sheet. If that makes sense, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Um, on this back wall, we're going to show. We can't get in to show you that one um, being fixed because the fence is like that and it's really tight. Um, but so that's how you cut the angle. But we're going to show you the back wall. We'll also show you show you the transitions between. We will have cedar here and metal there and we're going to show you how we're going to transition around that and we're also going to show you how we're going to get around the corner on the metal and all there's a couple of ways of doing that what i'd like to do is bend the metal around the building whether or not i'll be able to i don't know we have done it previously if not we'll use a flashing battening right david just jump here mate just right we're using resilient bar for them for the metal yeah it doesn't need the airflow like timber does because it doesn't need to dry out like it does but you've still got airflow coming up through there so that's great that's good you can use slate lats and screws like i've explained but on wooden cladding you, you ideally want to have double battening so when um let's say for instance these are my two bits of cladding going on there like that yeah then I've still got plenty of airflow going up and it can go left and right and it can go up and down. So you, ideally you want double battening on timber cladding because you want it to be able to dry out naturally when it gets wet, which will prolong the life of it. So that's the double battening. What we will do in all, if you've wired up the same way we have externally, we want to form these holes, these drill holes. Yeah, they all want forming because that is a weak point and then you're going to get condensation build up on there because you've got cold hitting warm. So they need forming. Um, what else is to talk about? We will talk about battening more extensively when we come to do the cedar. Should be going to get the cedar tomorrow. Um, we'll show you now cutting the sheet, marking up and cutting the sheet, yeah? And then, then we'll show you the drivel and riveting around the other side. Right, so we've marked our difference in our sheet now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of ways of cutting this and 
another way of finishing it on the top. Um, ideally, what we like to do is have our cuts at the bottom, but obviously you can't have your cut at the bottom when, you, when you're cutting a tapered cut like this. Um, it's not so easy to do the profile. We did have a jig, didn't we? But we cut it up the other week saying we'd never need it again. Um, but there. So that we're going to cut that with um, the nibbler. But what I'm going to show you and all is see if we can cut it with uh, tin snips. Over there, Brandon. So the thing is, right, and before I forget, right, Jen and John went to pick up this yesterday at Four Gales. Four Gales is where we get all our metal cladding from. Um, they're a great company, great company to deal with. Um, and, you know, if, if you ring them up today, they'll do the best to sort you out as quickly as possible. I have no idea how much delivery is or carriage, so you'll have to find out yourself. And they'll cut it to any size as well, yeah. We've ordered these long because we knew we were going to have to cut it. Um, what we've got now is a plastic coat one, but... But if you watch this video that I'm going to show you in a minute now, the, the guy in general will be talking about plastic coat, but it's got a plastic coat finish on, and it doesn't scratch as readily. I mean, it does a little bit, but if you get the one, what did he say, poly, poly coat? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember now, but there's another one that we used to get, and it scratches up as soon as you look at the bloody thing. But this, this is great, this has got like a polyester finish on it, poly coat finish rather, um, and it doesn't scratch up. So you could go down the road of cutting it with tin snips, which gets a neat, a neat cut, but... I don't know if you've got left or right aviation snips. It, it starts to bend it, doesn't it, John? Um, like it is doing there, and it becomes a problem to cut it. You can also cut it with a grinder, but what you're going to do then is burn off the plastic coat, which is then obviously going to um, induce rust in it. So another way of doing this, if you can't do this right, you cut it with a grinder, yeah, and you've got a bit of, of a rough cut. Then what you can do then is order a flashing. That detail there is 30 mil. So if you order a flashing off Fargale at 30 mil by 50 mil, the 30 mil will sit there, the 50 will hang down over your rough cut, and then you can just rivet it to the front of your cuts so it'll look nice, um, nice and tidy. If that's the road you're gonna go down. But with this one, we're gonna use the nibbler out with over here. You wanna cut it, Jen, or me? Uh, right, where is it? Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Um, it, it's a Makita nibbler. We, we, when did how long we had this? A couple of years now. Nearly two years. Uh, nearly two years, and we've never actually changed the bit in it. Um, but it's a great tool. It just bends it a little. <laughs> Good morning. So me and John were at Four Gales this morning. We're gonna see if we can see how the metal's getting made today. Talk you through the process and what we use it for. Let's go and have a word with them now. I've had a word with the guys and seen if any, any of them wanted to come on camera, but they all said no, um, so it's down to little old me to do it. So we're going to start off at, this, at the start. Uh, as you can see, the sheets are flat at this point. It's on a big, massive roll here, and then it's going to travel. Do you want to just span and quickly just show what it's going to go through, John? So if we're ready to put this, John, if we're ready to put the sheets through now, so it'll travel along here, there we go. It starts off giving two ridges because too much pressure is not going to cause the, give the ripples. So as it goes through, more and more ripples. So this is, is it um, plastic coated this then, yeah? Plastic coated. Have you got any sheets that aren't? Right, ah, so here we go. So if you show the guillotine here, so it comes through, the sheets come through here, and then they get cut by this guillotine here. Just going to show it now. Sound. And there are the sheets. So this is it. This is how your metal gets formed. This is what we use for the back of the buildings. It's no maintenance clad. It's got ridges to help the airflow. Um, oh, let me just quickly show you what we used to use. So we did used to use... Hold on. Uh, we haven't got the screws right now. I did ask him for some, but I think he's forgot. Um, so we'd put these the screws in, and these little caps had set on the outside, but they didn't they didn't finish the best. So instead of these, we now use anthracite rivets, which you can also get from here as well. Um, it just gives a better finish. You can seal each piece together, and it just it looks nicer. Uh, we keep a couple of different types of sheets in. Um, there's plastic coated steel, which is what you're looking at now. That tends to be uh, a 0.7 gauge, quite durable and quite thick. 
Um, and then we move on to the smoother stuff, which is polyester coated. So it's a bit cheaper, but it does scra it scratches a bit easier. Um, but it is a hell of a lot cheaper, like we said. Um, and it gives a different finish off, so a different aesthetic for the customer. Is that yeah, that's the same, same stuff, different colour. So. so how many different colours do you do? Oh, there's loads. Yeah. There's loads. Greys, greens, browns, blues, blacks. There's, there's all sorts. Obviously, all varying. So. Okay. Colour coded screws? Yes, so, so we keep various different fixings from fixing to steel to timber to angle iron. Um, they all come with colour coded screws, you know, again just to keep it looking pretty for you. So. Sound? Alright, well thank you for that. Cheers. Let's get back to the job. Right, what's he doing, Jim? Right, so he's just putting the metal sheets on van now. These ones have been pre-cut ready for us. We've cut them a bit longer um, and we'll, we'll sort out the angle and stuff when we get to work or the height. Right, so we're all strapped up, but ha uh ha, -huh, we're going to go back to the job now, we'll see you there. So that cuts that, it leaves these like almost like little toenail clippings. Um, they're a bugger to get off your grass, so that's why we're cutting in here. And it's not actually that sharp, it is a little bit sharp, but not that sharp. So that's how we're going to cut that. John is then going to rivet it together, right John? So what we do is So we used to use the, the tech screws um, as per the ring, but what we do now we, we screw through. That'll go into the resilient bar. I'll screw through into the resilient bar, pop a rivet in there. And it rivets in the colour corded, look it's nice and tidy. Like if you've ever used a manual rivet gun, you know what a pile of crap they are. That's a brilliant kit. That. It gets the yeah, the M12 one and it collects the bits in there as well. Yeah, so you can pick up your crap as you're going along. Riveting's a nice little feature. What we used to do is screws and the colour coded caps, didn't we, Jen? Uh, but as you've just seen Jen in the video now, she'll show you the colour coded caps. What we've done, I'm gonna show you in a minute, but we've actually folded that corner bit of metal round. Um, so where John's got his hand now, instead of a flashing, we've come round from the side and folded it round. It's a bit of a four-man job, but we've managed to do it. Brandon, has, Brandon, show him that staff you've made. So he's created this staff. So what will happen now, I'll get the sheet on like that and push it up, hold it up with my foot. John's going to locate it there in the correct place, which it is. John, is it? Yeah. And Brandon's just hooking his staff on the bottom now. And there's an indication mark there where he wants to drill. So he will drill that and John will rivet it. It's a bit of a... It's normally a two-man job in it, but obviously we're trying to show you on video as well. Once you get two rivets in it, or two screws, you're good to go. Well, you can see the detail on the finish there with the rivets. It's a lot nicer um, than the screw cap. The 5 mil drill bit and a colour-coded rivet. What they'll do, they'll basically go along now and they'll do every single panel and you can see the resilient bar there so they're going to drill through there, through the resilient bar and then that will pull that up, rivet that to that and of course that's fixed to the timber frame as well. Um, so at the front of the side we will have a, a cedar corner, we'll also finish a cedar corner here, depending, we don't know what... Because we fold it round the corner, we don't know we yet what profile we're going to have on the end there until we get this last bit on. But I will, I will make something if, if the cedar corner doesn't work on it. Right, so that's another day over now. That's a no maintenance cladding, so that's finished lovely there. Sometimes it finishes on a high, um, and but then that's another detail altogether, which I can't really show you until it does finish. But that'll finish nice with the cedar corner. You can see it's all riveted. It just wants to wipe down there. You can see there, I'll just step back. You can see we've bent it round the corner there rather than putting a flashing on. Um, we did that on the triangle job and all. We forced it round the corner. There's a bit of a squeeze for four people, but we managed it. So that's them two sides completed. In here now, um, John, are all the, f all the first fix electrics done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, John will talk you through all the first fix electrics tomorrow and he'll draw you some drawings as well. Um, but they're all done. We just want these holes forming up now. Um, before What he'll probably do is connect his sockets up before we form, just so he's got a bit of wiggle room on his cables as well. Inside, Tom has finished. You've seen Tom come. He plasters all our bills for us. Um, it took him, did he say three hours, John? Yeah. Three hours. Um, it's obviously wet, but you can see it's starting to dry off already. You can see where all the board joints and the screws are as well. Um, and the window 
You can see the window. So I told you I'd, I'd made the opening a bit wrong, so I actually managed to get round that now, and that's a lovely little finish on there. You've seen yesterday that we brought two bits of plasterboard up just to try and get us over that lip. Excuse me, I spat. When, when, we, when we put our windowsill on now, we'll back cut the windowsill so the windowsill sits in there um, and it sits over that little upstand as well. So that is day... What was the first day or Wednesday? Did you say it first day that is day nine then day nine complete right if you've seen the six digit number that is your burner phone number um as i said yesterday i will not reply to any messages on that i just want literally your phone number with the six digit number whatsapp to that number i know some people are struggling with whatsapp um and they've sent me a normal ms is it msm a normal text message anyway, but that's fine as well. We'll deal with that as well. There's your burner phone number. There's your sterner summer. So you potentially could win that. As um, I'll be honest with you, there's been quite a few people seeing the number. Not not loads. The odds are still good. That is us. We have been nominated for the most charitable business of the year. The link, as always, will be at the bottom of the video. Link for that, if you could vote for us for that. Um, there'll be a link for build packs as well. There's 13 different sizes. And if you want to build to this kind of quality, then, you know, build pack is a bit of a gold a godsend, as a lot of people have already said. And what else is there? The raffle, the raffle started to pick up pace again now, so it's marching on to 20,000, so we won't be far off from giving away either 20 grand or the pod, whichever you prefer. Um, tomorrow is Friday now, might possibly go get the seed and might not. Um, what I will show you though, if I fit the bifold doors, I will show you the quickest possible, most easiest way to fit a set of bifold doors. What David has done is put a laser on, and them slate buttons there, run all the way around and they are laser lined in. So what happens now, tomorrow we'll take them slate buttons off there. I'll give the edge of plaster a little rub on my finger just to take the sharp edges off. I will fit my silt and I'll sit my door up, stick my door in and my door will sit tight to them plaster reveals. It's the quickest, fastest, easiest way you will possibly ever fit a set of bifold doors in a timber framed um, structural opening. Um, but like I say, you've got to put your slate buttons on dead right. And you know why I fit the window. We wouldn't normally do that. Obviously, that plaster will just will clean all that off there. No problem. Um, but I don't normally like to fit them first. Is that it, John? Is there anything else? So we've clad the siding metal. We've clad the backing metal. I showed you how to do the angling metal as well. We've answered quite a few questions today as well. Um, I don't know if you're finding that bit boring, but I know a lot of people have asked questions. So we'll probably go on with that until we finish this build. Tomorrow is Friday. Get some doors in. Will you second fix tomorrow, John? Electrics, possibly. It depends. It depends how quickly. If this plaster is sufficiently hard enough tomorrow, where John doesn't think he's going to damage it, then he'll second fix his electrics, and we'll do a detailed. John will do a detailed um, description of all the electrics, I suppose. Won't you then, John? Um, we're going to talk about the cable and nogs. At the moment, all we did was pull the cable up to the building so that we could get it behind. And what we've done, we've cleated the cable up behind one of the high profiles on the metal so it's actually sat behind one of them high profiles um it takes a bit of time to work it out but it's, it's a good little thing and it's going to show you how to do cat six connections as well hi john will that be tomorrow no possibly not would it um he will talk you through the internet and all and which more than we use so don't forget like subscribe follow and hit the bell isn't the bell john the notifications when we post them and if you're watching this for the first time and you're on day nine if you look on my playlist you'll see start to finish of this build okay so thank you and we'll see you tomorrow